What's going on, Dragon Balls? Welcome back to another player interview. This time, I'm here with Thomas Higgins, winner of ARG Indie over the past weekend. So, Thomas, uh, tell the people how you're doing and kind of introduce yourself. Oh, yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, and I've been playing Dragon Ball for exactly a year of uh, this past weekend. So, it was kind of nice to win a big tournament. Dang, that's sick. Like a year anniversary, you pull out a big W. That's That's super awesome, dude. Uh, how did the tournament go? Talk about a little bit about the tournament experience. Like, did you expect making it to the finals? Have you been playtesting a whole ton for this event? How did that all work for you? <laughs> so, funny story is uh, Friday, my buddy came over to borrow cards to go to Indy because I planned on just doing the preliminaries for the weekend. And I wasn't planning on going. But then I built this deck, which I was building it for a friend to actually get him into Dragon Ball. And I figured this would be a good deck for him to learn and get into it. And then I had another buddy borrow a bunch of my cards, so I was like, you know what, I'll just play this deck, and I took it. So I didn't have any practice with the deck. I just took it and went straight to the tournament with it. Nice. And you mentioned, like, the same day you left uh, Indy, you went and won a prelim with it, too? Oh, yeah. Yep. I took the deck straight after I made the changes that I felt that needed to be changed. I took the changes, went to a shop tournament, and went 4-0. That's insane, dude. It's so, like your, uh, your year-long anniversary of Dragon Ball was just absolutely plus so that's pretty sick so uh we'll talk about uh the deck a little bit talk about the ratios and uh, kind of pick your brain a little bit to see why you played what you did so uh 10 dragon balls right off the bat i really like this number i feel like a lot of mono blue builds don't necessarily play 10 sometimes they play nine sometimes the riskier versions play eight because there's no real way to search dragon balls in a you know in a, in a blue version so uh i'm sure this worked out really well for you but were there any games you didn't open with the ball Actually, there was only one game I didn't open the ball, and I just saw the ball run out of my life. So I felt like having the deck to be at least 10% Dragon Ball, I felt was the most important part of this deck. Because even though, you know, it's mono blue, I need to constantly have a ball in my hand to keep drawing, keep up with whatever I'm playing against. For sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, I definitely agree. I definitely agree that 10 is like the, uh, the right amount. So now we have like a 2-2 two -two split on Power Burst and Aiderade. So how did this split work for you? Do you, do you kind of wish you had more Power Burst for the utility of it being free? Or was it like perfectly fine? So going into the tournament, I knew I was going to face a lot of Janemba. And I knew my my 3-drop was going to be an issue for them. And I knew they are going to warp it with their Janemba. So there's nothing I can do about it. I also kept in mind that I was wearing a set amount of Gokus and a set amount of uh, Vegetas. So I figured if they got milled and I needed it for the combo piece to play Gogeta, that I can use Aiderade to pick it up. But overall, I only played two games that actually came in pretty clutch. But other than that, I honestly probably would cut the Aiderades at this point because I didn't really need them. Because I had so much search with the Android 8, the one drop. So it wasn't too bad, but at the same time, it did come in pretty handy against uh, Janemba. When they warped my three drop, I just got it right back and played it again. Excellent. So that kind of brings me to my next question is, is Android 8? So uh, this is a card that I've started to cut from a lot of my skillless list because for me, a lot of times it's not worth giving up the kid Goku just to pop a guy. And a lot of times the Android gets answered, but it seems like you also used it to search your Gokus and Vegeta's because you do play Gogeta 7. So how did Android 8 perform for you? Did it overperform, underperform, or was it kind of just like there? Um, A lot of times actually... It came in a lot handier than I thought it would. Um, a lot of times on my sideboard, though, I usually sideboard one to two out. But overall, just the fact that you can like your top seven and grab a, a Vegeta or Goku, that was a really big deal, especially because I only run four Goku. And I really need to see it if I wanted to do my Gogeta uh, ability. For sure, yeah. I mean, uh, I definitely, th I can definitely see an ability this where it has a lot more utility. Like in my builds, I wasn't playing Gogeta 7, so that makes a ton of sense. So Temporal Rescue Trunks, I think this is like the MVP super combo for Skillless right now because of Victory Strike. Uh, is that the main reason why you played it or you just uh, never really need Overwhelm besides Demigra? So when it came down to the super combo, I did thought I thought a little bit about Master Roshi, but at, at the end of it, this was just a better super combo just because of Victory Strike and because of Janimba. Um, the reason why I say it's good because Janemba is because if I do Overrealm, then I don't have to draw a card off of it if I'm less life than I need to be. Or I can easily early combo so I can give my 15k, 25k, make him have to spend 10k more power. Just out combo or just take the card. For sure. 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's a great choice, especially in the face of things like Victory Strike and in the face of things like Genova. I think it's a really, a really good choice. So, uh, three Krillin, we have the one Demigraw, and then complementing Demigraw, we have the Gogeta Hero Revive and kind of and the Adult Cost Vegeta too. Those are kind of like your your boss monsters. This, this feels like a very boss monster esque version of Skillless. So, what made you decide to go with like a more you know tall boss monster strategy of Skillless more than just like the uh, the Skillless beatdown? Because you you can definitely still go, still go Skillless beatdown in this deck, but uh, talk about why you decided to include so many boss monsters. So I feel like if I hit about turn five, I'm going to be struggling to kill them at this point. This is a point where I need to make either deal with this threat or I'm in trouble. So I feel like being on turn five, that's kind of the point where I can't really aggro them as much as I want to. Or it's getting to the point where they're milling me out. So if I put a boss monster at the end of my deck, which is five mana, you know, turn five, that's when it's like, okay, here's my biggest threat. Can you deal with it? If not, I'm going to push forward. Gotcha. And then Adult Cost Vegeta does kind of serve as like another boss monster, you know, a five energy, triple strike, pop a guy. Uh, but this is a card that's always been like lackluster for me if you're not playing bad ring because it does kind of just lose to a negate, right? So did Adult Cost actually come in clutch in the games or uh, not so much? So I've had a couple of games where Adult Cost actually was the perfect card to play at that current time, especially when I was at five mana. Um, to give it a good example, I played against a green bully leader and... I pretty much negated all of his attacks and he had the SCR out and he couldn't get himself down to one life to make me discard. So he left it on the table untapped and I was able to pop it and then just hit it for triple strike for game. Yeah, that's power removal does seem like it can come in, in clutch a lot, especially if you're not playing over ohms like Dimensional Banish or Foo. Uh, so then just going through the rest of the list, we had Awakening Talon Pan, the Sensu Bean, and then we had a four Goku, five Vegeta split. And then the two Chompas going for game. So with the six Dragon Balls and Chompa, I'm assuming like you can get Deborah up to like insane numbers in this deck, which is uh, pretty insane. So we'll move over to the side deck now that we've kind of got the main deck out of the way. So three Kanoa, how much did you guess did you actually end up facing? Zero, actually, the funny part was. I never brought Kanoa in once. I mean, everyone was playing it safe from my standpoint. There was one player that was playing for Shugesh in the top eight, but I unfortunately didn't get to play him. I did play all of top eight though throughout the whole tournament. Did you did you face against any Broly players that just didn't happen to be playing Shugesh, or you or you just kind of dodged the Broly players? I managed to dodge all of them. Do you feel like that would have been a uh, tougher matchup for you, or do you feel like you, your deck was pretty well equipped? Um, from being a past Broly player, I was pretty much well equipped and ready to know. I was pretty much knowledgeable of what I needed to do and how I needed to do it, so I didn't feel like it was gonna be a threat. Excellent. And I actually meant to ask a little bit earlier. So how do you feel about the matchup spread? So you just talked about Broly a little bit. How do you feel about the Geneva matchup with this deck? Um, the Geneva matchup, when I went to my sideboard, I really hated the deck. So I really went with 4TN, which was excessive, but successful at the same time. Um, Geneva matchup, I feel like I have the edge. Um, a lot of people probably disagree with me, but I feel like that my final match with Geneva, I had full control. Especially when I had to go Gita in my hand right away. I was like, all right, I'm going to end this by turn five. Yeah, absolutely. I was just scrolling through Facebook and I happened to tune in at the perfect time. And we talked about this a little bit over Facebook where uh, I saw you drop the Gogeta 7 and you couldn't necessarily kill him that turn. But like then the, the Genova player didn't have enough gas to kill you back. You know, he attacked with the, with the uh, striving Goku. He was digging for the Champa but couldn't see it. And then that kind of just like, you know, put the nail on the coffin. So I definitely agree. And I, and I agree with you. I think Skillless does have like a slight edge over Janumba in most cases. And I especially think with like Demigra and Gojira Hero Revived, I think that uh, that increases your win percentage against that matchup a lot more. So I definitely can can uh, agree with that. So I appreciate your insight and kind of in kind of the, the matchup spread. So two power bursts to replace the Aiderade. Was this like a common switch out for most of the day? Um, It was mostly common against the Green Broly matches. Um. But other than that, no, I usually, when I was playing against Janemba, I'd actually take out all the negates and just right. go full aggro. Right, that makes sense. Uh, did you ever consider Whis's Coercion for, like, uh, the Broly matchup where you could just get, like, more negates per turn? No, I didn't feel like I was actually, the, the funny part is when it comes to green Broly, I'm trying to put the pressure on them and not worry about them putting pressure on me. So, in the end, I was trying to get out as much as I possibly could. I actually brought in the Dimension Support Trunks in against them just to keep pushing i actually cited uh demigra a lot more than i wanted to right but in a matchup like green broly it's actually pretty dead and i and i i do like that as well because i feel like in skillless builds that play sense would be and i feel like you actually do have an edge in the broly in the broly matchup as well because like if you can survive to turn like three four 
I do think that like because of Bean, you can push like hard enough to get past their their negates, their shocking death falls, their uh, their Broly pops, and I, I actually like Dimension Support Trunks a lot for that reason. So Dimension Support Trunks was mostly just like for matchups you wanted to go aggressive in. Did you also bring that in against Janemba? Actually, um, I brought it in against Janemba the first time I played, and I felt like it was very clunky, and I was too concerned about trying to work with what I had in my drop. Um, I started to use the fact that if they milled a four-star ball, I'd bring it back with Kid Goku instead of actually trying to go through the deck and find it. Right. Um, but when it came to Janemba, I was actually playing around Kami most of the day, and this is when Pan came really, really useful. I'd make sure that if I had a ball or Goku, I would aggressively mulligan for it to get the Pan, because keeping three on the table and then putting Pan and just keep putting pressure while drawing my life it made the world of difference. Right, not being able to get blown out by that Kami, I'm sure, just like putting pressure on every single turn, that's uh, definitely pretty solid. So we talked about the 4TN, a little excessive, but I, it, you know, it proved to be successful for you. Uh, only one Mass Sand and then two Gogeta 5. So it looks like these might have both been for like the Skillless Mirror matches, but talk a little bit about these cards and why only one Mass Sand? So I brought in just one Mass Sand. I originally was going to bring in two, but I felt like the, my matchup against Green Brawly was going to be a little bit more rougher than the actual Mirror match. But I did bring the Mass Saiyan, uh, yeah, the Mass Saiyan in for the Mirror Match, just in case that I could just get rid of all their board that way. And also, I brought in the five drop Gogetas against the Mirror Match as well, but I didn't see any Mirror Matches, I didn't see any kind of variance of it. I was only skillless, and towards, till the end I saw like one more, but that was it. Yeah, it's really interesting how like, before Super Shenron got banned, like, skillless was the most widely represented deck at several events but now it does seem like it's kind of dwindling in popularity maybe people are kind of getting tired of it i'm not sure but uh maybe if you can real quick maybe just tell us some of the changes you made when you went to that prelim that you felt like you needed to make so i instantly dropped the eight raids um i dropped android eight to three and to what i did is i actually brought in two power bursts just to accommodate for that uh loss there right and then the eight or eight I replaced with a TN because my locals on the other would probably be one Janemba player. And at the time it was just best of one, so I didn't really have a sideboard. So I'd kind of kind of work with what I had. Um, I do have to say that the biggest change I'd do is I'd probably cut the Demigra for like maybe a scientist foo or something that had double strike, or even just a regular foo that removes a card. The really? reason why I so say this is. Oh, hmm? sorry. Go ahead. The reason why I say this is because every time I felt like I was going to play Demigra, I instantly felt like I was going to attack, they would negate, I'd take four cards, but then I felt like I was super vulnerable at that point because of how the meta is currently. People can either refill their hand with Green Broly, or they'll have enough cards in their hand that they don't have to worry about the attack from Demigra. Right, I, I actually completely agree. This format, I've been seeing a lot of people tap out for boss monsters like Gogeta, like Hyda Mastery, like uh, Demigra, and, and I see them lose, which is actually kind of funny and interesting. Uh, another reason why I'm not like playing Demigra on my main deck right now, so I definitely can can agree with that. Where like Scientist Fu would give you more card advantage and more pressure, and uh, you know Dimensional Banisher obviously would would fill a kind of niche. Uh, utility role so i definitely can agree with that so it looks like we've been pretty much covered the entire deck thank you so much for like you know talking through that with me i know the uh, viewers are really gonna appreciate that so any final like things you want to say about the event or any final shout outs you want to give before we wrap this video up you know i've been to a lot of events i'm not just talking about dragon ball i'm talking about magic um i used to be sponsored through my shop and then i got married and you know had a life pretty much right um, I have to say that most of the players that I played with at this event were extremely nice and very clear and understanding and we worked through everything, especially if there's like any kind of little hiccup or whatever, but I have to say the player base and the community is very friendly and I really enjoy that. Like I didn't have a single person that I didn't play against that didn't add me on Facebook and was like, hey man, I had a great time playing with you. And I felt like it was a very well-rounded event. Um, I didn't feel like I had any problems with any decks. There was one deck that I was like a little scared of, but it was just because I didn't recognize it. And it was the Black Broly player, and he actually did really well. He, I barely beat him, so it was a fun, fun game there. Awesome, man. Yeah, I totally agree with everything you said about the community. The community in this game is just... It's something special about it. They're, they're an amazing group of people. But uh, Thomas, thank you so much again for sharing your thoughts with us, and uh, we'll, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. 
Yo, yo, Danny, I got it, I got it, I got it. Genron hand control, seven one-star balls. Yo, that is so garbage. All right, all right, all right. Here's this out, here's this out. Mono black OJ. That's even more garbage! <laughs>